Hello, this is Scott Thorley with Automotive Management Solutions. And this is a video that I put together for people who are new to Protractor and are interested in writing their first couple tickets. They just want to make sure they start off on the right foot. First of all, when you open Protractor, you're going to start on this blank screen with a ribbon on the top. The first place you're going to want to go is go to your work orders. The screen that comes up is called the work in progress tree, and this is not going to look familiar to people coming off some other systems. So our first recommendation is that you go right over to the prioritization icon. When I click on that, you get a work in progress screen that shows you one line for each ticket, shows you the vehicle, service advisor, technician, uh, duration, uh, etc. So it should be a more familiar looking screen. Then, when you want to start a new work order, you can click on the new work order button. Now, Protractor has some great options to create work orders with jobs already on them, but I'm going to walk you through what we call the work order wizard first. I click on the top half of the work order button. The first thing that's going to come up is what service does the customer want done? Now, some people are going to be used to getting the customer and vehicle first. If you want to do that, you can just click the next button at the bottom and you're on the customer vehicle lookup screen. You can always go back from there to add a service or go forward and add a service later. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and add an oil change. I'll start with a conventional oil change. Now when I double click on this, a window pops up. These are going to be either recommended additions to this job or replacements. So in other words, I can add an oil change courtesy inspection I can also, if after a discussion with the customer and they decide to do a blended or synthetic oil change, I could select those here and it would replace the conventional oil change. I could go continue and add additional services onto the ticket, but for now, I can see on the right hand side that I've got the inspection and the oil change, so I'm going to go ahead and click next. Now this is where we look up the customer and vehicle. Protractor has a really good search functionality. Um, driven by phone number. So I'm going to put in a phone number and if this is in my database, so if a customer walks in you can ask their phone number. If they're in their database they'll show up in the top in under this location. That, that means they're already in your database. In this case it's not but it shows up under the White Pages Pro and it actually has the name and address here. This is going to work about 80 to 85 percent of the time. If you want to add this customer to your database, you want to right click on it, click edit, make any changes here, and click save and close. Now you'll notice that customer is under this location and no longer under the white pages. They're now in my system. Now the biggest mistake we see early on is people now going and clicking the next button. But what happens is you end up with a counter sale ticket, which is like a parts only ticket, because I've not selected a vehicle. So before I click next, I want to go ahead and add a service item. I can click this arrow and I would see if there's any vehicles already assigned to this customer if they weren't a new customer. Or I can go to add service item, which is basically add a vehicle. Now I can type in the license plate and it defaults to my state once we get your database set up. And I can click on the binoculars and it's going to do a Carfax lookup. It'll show you, me the VIN and I can pick the year, make, and model. You can also do it through a VIN decode. You can also go through uh, a year make model selector. Once I've got the vehicle information, I click save and close. Now I have the customer and the vehicle. Now I'm ready to proceed to the next screen. Now the next three screens, you can go through quickly for new customers. The first screen is going to be deferred work, which is like declined work. If it's a new customer, so I don't have any yet, I can click next. The next screen is for uh, Epic or service intervals where you could select a service interval or if I had a mileage in it would automatically pick the mileage and it would tell you what needs to be done at that service interval. The last screen allows you to set up reminders. Now this is something we'll work with later but to get started I would recommend clicking the action, add, and then you just hit enter on this screen and it shows you all your groups at the top and add the basic service group. Here you could customize the intervals for the oil change reminder or tire rotation. I'm just going to leave them for now. This shows me the reminders that are now set for this customer and it knows that I have an oil change on this ticket so it's going to reset that reminder 
once I finalize this ticket. I'm going to click Next. Now it gives me a summary of the ticket. The work order is ready to be uh, worked on now. I can click Finish. It's going to close the wizard and open up a work order screen. Now in this case, I had an oil change, so the window that pops up is very useful. It's going to tell me that even though my standard is uh, generic oil and five quarts, this is a four and a half quart engine and takes 5W20. So when I click OK, it's going to update that information. Now, I have other videos I can go on and, and show you about ordering parts and that kind of thing, but I wanted to get you at least to this point so that you have tickets with customers and vehicles assigned correctly and you're ready to start adding jobs and looking at parts. Thank you very much.